Kindness at work. Do you practice kindness at your place of employment? What would that even look like, being kind to your colleagues? Simple things such as opening a door, saying hello and smiling in the morning, something simple as being quiet when they're making a presentation, not talking over them. All those are very simple, kind acts. Being respectful, tapping down the negative. Mary Lynn Harris has two companies. One is called Kindness at Work. It's a consulting firm regarding employee well-being services. These services are appropriate for employees, but also the head honchos in the corporations. Mental health is vital that we start addressing this, especially now during the pandemic. Mary Lynn also has a wonderful podcast where she in- interviews several gurus in this industry of well-being at corporate level, but even on a personal level. That podcast is called Creating an Impactful Legacy. What's important about having an employee well-being service at your business because people bring their issues to work. Even though we would like to think we can leave them at home, we have learned during this pandemic that there's a lot of self-care issues which we do not know how to manage in our lives. When you bring in an expert, they can create an environment where you can improve your ways of communication, your ways of talking to others so that you are being kind. The issues such as you're not going to be that most productive when you're concerned about personal issues. You're going to pay less attention to details when you're worried about personal issues. This kind of attitude worrisome, anxious, depression, destroys creativity. All of these have an impact on corporate profits. And yes, you can add them up. Let's take a fresh look at well-being in our corporate environment, in the business world. Take, for example, Naomi Osaka, the number two ranked female tennis player. What did she just do? She left the French Open when she was winning, and she didn't go to Wimbledon. If you listened to her, she would tell you, I am depressed, I have anxiety issues, and they evolve from press corps because the press corps treats her abominably. And this is, unfortunately, something that happens in our corporate world. The press corps have almost an angry attitude toward her if she has missed a serve or if she's lost a match. They are aggressive in their questions. And why is this? Try kindness toward the athletes. Ironically, when this was occurring for her during the French Open, the fact that she refused to talk to the press corps because they are rude to her, they are accusatory, they're not kind, they're not respectful, the French Open dignitaries became even more angry at her. Luckily, other athletes defended her. They spoke up in her defense. This needs to happen at the corporate level also. When we take a fresh look at how important mental health issues are, you are gaining loyalty from your staff. And you're gaining staff members who will spend much longer time in your corporation creating more profit for you. Another example is myself. I worked in the fine wine and spirits industry for over 25 years in New York. I loved my last importer distributor. I was 
their queen bee in the Hudson Valley. I was a top producer. At the end of my first year, I had just absolutely killed it. I was close to a million dollars in sales. The person before me was only selling $220,000 a year in sales. So I was, I was revered. December 29th, my direct report called me and said, Valerie, we need $17,000 more from you before the end of the year. Let me share with you, if you are a sales rep and you have not met your goals and exceeded them, you need to leave that industry by the end of the year if you have not done that. Moreover, if you are a manager, a direct report, and you're asking a ridiculous goal, you really need to leave management. However, being double type A, I said, no problem. Honestly, I had already planned to go out for two or three hours and thank my accounts who made my year exceptional. I had a case of champagne in my car. I was going into my accounts. I was going to thank them for all their business. What happened instead was a drunk who was also a heroin addict ran into me at 55 miles per hour. I was in the hospital. Once I was out of the hospital, I had all kinds of broken bones to recuperate. The end of the story is that this direct report was merciless in finding out when I was going to return to work because he wanted his bonuses and his commissions, which were increased dramatically because of my work ethic. This was going on for the rest of the year. After I had returned three months of recuperation, he was still relentless. What came to my conclusion to leave the industry was his lack of management, his lack of empathy, concern about my mental health, my physical well-being. What I began to do when I decided it was time to leave the wine and spirits industry for their lack of leadership and management I began to look for transformation gurus. I needed to hear and discover people who understood what compassion in the workplace was, who understood leadership skills, spirituality, that it's not always about the bottom line. And when you're happy and and healthy mentally, you will go to the ends of the earth for a corporation because your profit is good for their profit. And that's how I came to discover people such as Bob Proctor and someone wonderful like Mary Ellen Harris who understand that mental health really increases your bottom line. What I propose for those of you who are going to have to go back to work inside an environment is look at Mary Lynn's first page on her website, Kindness at Work. She has free resources. Get together a presentation Take it to your decision maker, not your direct report. Take it to the head honcho because he, he, she's just going to push it down. Make this presentation for her services. Give it some time. If If they say no, just revise it and go back and just keep on. Now, if it's a definite no, then be rogue. Get together your teammates, buy her services, Use these services yourself to prove to them that mental health in the workplace is a huge competitive edge to other corporations. You will be more creative. You will pay more attention to detail. You will be able to manage the ups and downs of anxiety and depression. You can do this virtually. You can have these wellness services from Mary Lynn before work at lunch or after work. Just show these corporations that mental health is meant for everyone. There. (laughs) Kundalini Yoga. I am going to include a really fun and actually funny video, training video for Kundalini Yoga from Guru Jaga, one of my other virtual teachers. This also has to do with your mental health, but also it's called Beauty Secrets. Now, Kundalini Yoga is not gender specific. And Guru Jagat actually talks about if men want to also 
sculpt your face with a specific Kriya. You can work on your parathyroid, which also will work on your lymph nodes to cleanse them. This is a really short video. It's actually very funny because we actually exercise our breasts, but men can do the same thing. Men do have breasts. This particular video talks about oxytocin, talks about dopamine, and these creas will increase production of them. And if you listen to my last podcast, you'll know that these are really good hormones to create and increase in your body. So it is called Kundalini for Beauty Secrets. It's just fun. It'll be in my podcast details. Lastly, wine. I don't know if anybody's paying attention to the Pacific Northwest in California, but I can promise you this high heat and the fires are running our food. More importantly, for those of us who are in the wine industry, it is running the vineyards. This is costing us billions and billions of dollars. We really need to bound together and do everything on a personal level and a community local level to get control of this. We're not going to have a 2022 vintage in wines. I strongly suggest you start buying wine. Honestly, there's still a glut in the marketplace, but you're not going to see it in California wines. You're not going to see a glut in wines coming from Washington and Oregon. This is a travesty, and I don't like to end my podcast on a sad note, but I live in Gulfport, Florida now. I live on the coast. I live on a bay, and we are killing the manatees. We have red tide. I was watching a video last night about a young man who is taking plantings of mangroves that he started himself, and he is creating mangrove forestations basically in the water again. And that's what it takes. It just takes a little bit at a time, folks. Do it. In conclusion, our mental health doesn't stop at the workplace. As a matter of fact, we need to bring our mental health well-being services into our corporate environment. Look at Mary Lynn's website. The details are in my podcast details. Hire her. Good stuff. Review her free information. Start delving into it. Be rogue. Get into it. Kundalini Yoga, the, the video link I'm going to have is one of the funnest that Guru Jagat has done. Beauty secrets is what it's all about for men and women. Lastly, let's seriously do something on a local level every day to improve our environment. If you want more information about this young man who is gardening (laughs) a new mangrove gardens at the bay in, in, in his area in Fort Lauderdale, send me an email and I will help you out with that. In conclusion, I'm not a life coach. I'm not a consultant. I produce this podcast every week to help hundreds of people with just three simple, fun topics. Merci.